Okay, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to take a look at vector addition, which when we're working in more than one dimension uh, adds a layer of complexity. We know what adding scalars is like. Adding scalars would be like, you know, scalar addition is just something like um, you know, 2 plus 3 uh, yields 5. Or if we want to get slightly more complicated, you could say something like 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Um, we're adding numbers. They can have positive or negative values. Boom. And it's just the same addition you've seen in elementary school. Maybe you played with negative numbers uh, later, I'm not sure, but probably also middle school, maybe. Um, vector addition is different, and let's take a look and see what that means. Vectors, you remember, have both size, like those numbers 2 and 3, and 5, or negative 1, and they have direction, like left or right or up or down, back or forward, um, 30 degrees above the horizontal uh, westward. Um, there's a whole range of possibilities here, but there's particular directions that you can assign a number, like an angle to, and there's size. So when we add them together, we might have a vector that looks like this. I'm going to call this vector, um, I'll call this vector, vector A. And we have another vector, and I will call vector B. Let's see, let's do my labeling over here. And when I want to add them together, the way we think about this is as if we took the second vector and attached the tail of that vector to the head of the first vector. And then the result of adding them together would be a vector that we drew from the base of the very first vector Um, to the head of the very last one. And we call this vector sum um, our resultant vector. It's the result of adding the two vectors together. So there we go. That's a vector a plus b right there. Um, and I'm going to give myself a little bit more space because I want to show you something else. Um, so I'll stick that over here. Say, OK, so that's vector r. Um, now, if we do this again, now I'm going to be a little careful here. Let's use this guy. And take vector b. Let's see, I can turn it that big. Try to make this parallel. This will be approximate. So this is also vector b. Now I'm starting it at the beginning, though. And this is supposed to be parallel and the same size, so same direction, same length as our original vector b. Um, also, 
we'll take vector a and we'll move it up. So this is also supposed to be um, the same size and in the same direction as our original vector a. These are supposed to be the same vectors. But I've ordered them around differently. So now, um, so this r here, this is um, b plus a. And its resultant is the same resultant as a plus b. Um, so we see that a plus b has vectors is the same as equal to b plus a. Um, so when we can go ahead and reverse the order and get the same answer, we say that the results are commutative. They change together. Is so when you change the order, it changes together so that the result is the same. Vector addition is a commutative operation. You know other mathematical operations that are also commutative. For example, um, scalar addition. You know, 5 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. So that's commutative. Um, multiplication, 5 times 3 is equal to 3 times 5. Also commutative. Um, um, 5 minus 3, which is 2, and then 3 minus 5, that's negative 2. This is anti commutative. It's equal to the negative of the original one. Uh, so not commutative, in fact, it's anti-commutative. And then division, 5 divided by 3 is not equal 3 divided by 5. So that's not not commutative either, uh, division. But vector addition is. OK. Um, that's cool. What else can we do with it? So this is what we're thinking about when we're adding vectors. We want to think about, well, what are some other properties that go with it, and what's the math that goes along with it? So. Let's erase a little bit here. So what's also true is that um, if you had some vector that was our resultant vector, um, there's a whole lot of different ways you could add vectors together and get there. Um, you could have you know, a vector going this way and that way, adding together. You could have one going here and over here and over here and over there. You could have one going here and here and here and here. There's an infinite set of combinations of vectors that could add together to get that resultant also an infinite set that will add together that won't get there. So when we want to work with vectors and add them together, 
and do the math that we need to do that, it makes sense to decompose this vector into component vectors in ways that make the math easiest. And one way to do that is to break them up into components that line up as sides of right triangles. Then we can use right triangle trigonometry. So how's this work? Um, so let's say we have a vector, we'll call it vector A, and we want to break it up into components. Um, we say that um, we say that these are orthogonal. So ortho means aligned, like your orthodontist will align your teeth. Um, the gonal part is like with shapes. So we're going to align things to shape, line things up with a coordinate system is the alignment we're talking about here. Um, and so there's two, there's parts that we can get that are on either sides here. The, um, component here, we call this angle theta, um, We'll call this um, the x component of angle A, of A. And we'll call this the y component of A. And we remember from right triangle trigonometry that um, that sine of that angle theta will equal a y divided by the size of a. When I write our vector in absolute signs. This means the magnitude of A, the size of A. So if A um, if A was, let's say, five meters at um, 30 degrees um, counterclockwise from the x-axis, then the magnitude of A would just be 5 meters. No direction associated. So we can, again, sine of this is the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So that means that this opposite side is that magnitude times the sine of that angle. Cosine of the angle is the length of the adjacent side divided by the magnitude of the overall vector. And so the x component of that vector is the magnitude of A times the 
times cosine theta. So let's think about that for a second. I'm going to rewrite that over on the right uh, in just a moment for reference. Um, theta k sub y is magnitude of a sine theta. Okay. Well, we can do the same thing with another vector. If we did this with vector b, this with vector b, then its, um, its overall uh, length would be related to its components and its angle. I'll give that a separate label for the angle, theta subscript b, um, by the same basic relationships. y component is b sine theta b, x component is b cos theta b. Okay, so that's how things go for components when you're breaking things down in, from single vectors. But we wanted to play with this and add vectors together. So how do we connect that? Like this. So, let's see, let's say we have some vector a here, and we have some vector b here, um, let's, let's make this a little bit um, more stark. Okay, so vector A is my x-axis, my y-axis. Vector A has some A component, some x component, Ax, um, and then it has some y component, Ay, which uh, I'm also going to stick over here. Um, B has some x component, Bx, and some y component, By. And so my resultant vector would equal um, Ax um, vector Ax plus the vector Ay plus the vector Bx plus the vector By all added together. But what that's like is adding Ax in the x direction plus Bx to Ay in the y direction plus by. That is we're adding all these things together to get the x component of our resultant vector 
we're adding these together to get the y component of our resultant vector. And from those, we can get that resultant vector. Um, resultant. Um, so how does that work? Well, we found the components and we add them together. And then we remember if you know the length of this whole side, the length of that whole side, then we can find the length of the hypotenuse from Pythagorean theorem. Um, if we were talking, instead of A's over here, say that we were talking about R's, that the magnitude of the whole thing would be the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. And that angle would be the inverse tangent of the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And let's do um, a quick reminder about some aspects of trig here. Um, that that's true for theta uh, between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Um, and that if theta is um, greater than negative, greater than 90, um, and less than or equal to uh, 270 degrees, then theta gets equal 180 plus or minus. Um, so another way of saying this is that um, if our x is greater than or equal to zero, then that's what's true. And if our x is less than zero, um, then that's true. OK, so that's it for our vector addition for the math and theory.